One of the most important animals out here, this is the uh, sea urchin, it's called Lytokinus variegatus, and it uh, is a grazer out here. It feeds on the blades of turtle grass and it feeds on uh, dead pieces of sea grass. Like this is a predatory snail. It eats other mollusks and it in turn is eaten by some of the larger snails out here like the left-handed whelk and the horse conch. I wasn't aware of how diverse this environment actually is. She compared it to uh, a coral reef and it's uh, kind of odd how the more diverse it is it also seems incredibly fragile. The environment is as well. So if you shuffle your feet, then the uh, stingray, if you bump into it, it'll just swim away. Well, they have, on ice. Yeah, they have no desire to sting anybody. They just don't like getting stepped on. It's exciting. We, I don't know. I was kind of scared at first because of the sea urchins, but the more you got comfortable with it, the more fun it was. You could spot stuff easily, and we actually studied like briefly about it, and we could pick out what you know families and phylums they were in. And what we're doing is we're towing this really small mesh net through a, through a shoal grass bed and capturing a lot of grass detritus and hopefully whatever small organisms are in a seagrass bed that you don't see snorkeling. And there might be grass shrimp, there might be several species of what are called Caribbean shrimp, there might be mycid shrimp in here, there might be small little snails. There's certainly a lot of drift algae and the drift algae will be most of what will haul out of there, but it can be full of little crustaceans, so we will see. The, the perculum, this horny plate this is St. Joe Bay in North Florida. Point. This is one of if the one best of areas for seagrass beds uh, in the area. Of, North Florida has some of the largest seagrass beds in the world, but most of them are a little bit harder to get to than these. These you can just walk right out. If you look out there, you see the difference in the color of the water. The very light stuff is a sandbar, and all that darker water beyond it is shoal grass, and then out beyond that, even further out, where you can just barely see the streaks of the sandbars, is turtle grass. And when you go out into that water, it's only about waist deep, it's warm, you can snorkel around. You, if you get upset about something, you can stand up and walk home. It's very simple to do logistically, and it's clear water. So what you have here are rooted flowering plants on the seafloor. And those rooted flowering plants are just chock full of marine animals. We've caught uh, Lots and lots of shrimp, lots and lots of clams, snails, sea squirts, tunicates, starfish, sea urchins. It's just like an underwater garden of marine life. There are not many places you can so easily go to and just see the huge diversity of marine life that's really out there. It's called a flat clawed hermit crab. This looks like this is one of my favorite places to bring students. We were really lucky to have some students here today. And typically when you take a group of people out there, they snorkel around for an hour or so, and they just, it's a life-changing experience for them because nobody has seen that kind of stuff so easily before, or so many things that are completely different from anything they'd ever seen before outside of an aquarium. So here you get to see it in its natural environment. And it's beautiful too. The, the sunlight on the water and the green grass, and uh, particularly when the water is really clear, it's just one of the most gorgeous places to be. Yeah, it was really neat because we had our goggles so we could see everything under the water and it was perfectly clear. And then we got to borrow some scuba gear for some of the guys, so it was really cool. A seagrass bed is sometimes part of an estuary where the water is lower in salinity. It's sometimes found in higher salinity environments. Actually, St. Joe Bay is one of the few bays in the North Florida area that's not estuarine because it doesn't have big river drainage. So the salinity stays high and it stays stable. The water stays clearer and that's where you get seagrass. But it does still need fresh water coming in like any other estuary because there's so much evaporation on these shallow grass beds that if you don't have more fresh water coming in to replace it, it gets it's hypersaline and then a lot of animals can't live here. So it's also a nursery habitat, just like a salt marsh. It is the place where you find the juveniles. The juveniles of the pink shrimp are here. When they grow up and they move offshore into deeper waters, that's where they're caught. But the little guys that are about this big, this big, this big, they're out here in the seagrass bed. So just like a salt marsh in an estuary, the seagrass bed is nursery habitat for scallops. It's also a nursery habitat for gag grouper. If you go offshore fishing for gag grouper, your gag grouper started off as a little fish about this big in here that was bright green so that it would blend in with the blades of seagrass. So they use that telson or tail to 
protect itself like it's doing here. It thinks it's got a bird after it. it thinks, <laughs> however, horseshoe crabs think. I don't know. <laughs> and then the other thing it does with it is it, it pushes. It's trying to push against the bottom now to flip itself over. So I, maybe we can see if, the, if we don't stir up any more mud here. But and when it hits it the in. bottom, you see how it's using the tail now and it flipped itself right over, mm -hmm. and off it goes. And, we were just really lucky to have the opportunity and be in the right place at the right time. It was a great experience. We've got a couple of scallops. See, this tulip shell is busy trying to eat that scallop right now. Hold it up. So, it will There's no end to the wonders of a seagrass bed.